So for today, I'm going to talk about uh, universal links. Um, how many of you have used it? Or how many of you have heard about it? Okay. So uh, Apple announced this uh, last year um, at uh, WWDC. And in, um, it supported, uh, actually, it, it can still support iOS 8, but they announced it last year. Um, Prior to universal links, URL schemes were the only way you can communicate with another app. For example, if you um, have your application where you needed to, um, let's say, let the user to log into Facebook, you install the Facebook SDK, and sometimes what happens when user taps on um, the connect button or the log into Facebook button, it goes to the Facebook app, it checks whether the user has logged in into Facebook or not, and then it comes back with some token that you handle on your application. And now, those kind of things were uh, being done uh, prior to universal links using um, custom URL schemes. And um, slowly, the custom URL schemes will be deprecated and universal links will be the only way to go forward. I'll, I'll tell um, you um, what are the regions. Um, but I'll show you a quick demo, again, from the uh, WPC session. <coughs> so here I have... Um, and WhatsApp um, application, and I have the WWDC app uh, installed uh, as well. So I go to WhatsApp, I tap on the link, and it directly comes to that WWDC app um, uh, and goes to that particular screen. Let's let's do it again and see what happens. Um, sorry. Um, and if I, let's say, delete the application, um, what is going to the behavior? Uh, you still go to the, any third party application or any other application, you tap on the link, it opens in Safari. Now, um, that kind of behavior is not possible or just by using custom URL scheme. You need to really write a lot of code, let's say, to um, handle within your application if a URL scheme is, pre first of all, you need to check whether you are, um, an application with a URL scheme is present or not um, uh, within the system. Um, and if it's present, then what you need to do? If it's not present, what you need to do? You still need to do some kind of, um, some of this uh, determination with universal links. But the main advantage of this is, is a um, HTTP or HTTPS. It's using HTTP or HTTPS scheme. That means we can potentially open um, a web page or you can direct user um, to your uh, website um, if that application is not, not installed. Um, another thing is you can do is you can use um, smart banners. I'll, I'll show you a couple of examples of smart banners. But let's say you have, uh, you have been browsing to certain websites and you see on top that install this application. Um, and sometimes, uh, let's say you are, uh, you have that application installed, and you see that open. Uh, let's say you go to m.youtube.com, it suggests you, hey, open the YouTube app because I know that you have already the YouTube app installed on your application. So that you can do using smart banner. But just for universal links, there is a very few steps that you need to do um, on the server side and the client side. I'll, I'll walk uh, through those steps. Um, and. Uh, a link will look like um, something like this. It's normally like how your um, a typical URL will look like. The first part is scheme. It can be HTTPS or HTTP. Then, then the next part is um, domain. This is your own domain. Then the last part is a path. It can be a direct path or a path prefix with certain parameter. You need to do something on the server side to make your app um, compatible with, uh, uh, you know, universally. First of all, you are trying to hit an URL, and um, you are redirecting that URL to your app um, if the app can handle that URL. So there is this file that you need to create, and the file name is to exactly match um, this name, Apple um, Das App Site Association. The second part is um, 
And let's see what, what, what this file looks like. This, this is a JSON file basically. You have the uh, apps links um, dictionary. Mm -hmm. Then you have the apps array. Now, uh, this is quite interesting. The second parameter, it needs to be there, the array, and it needs to be blank. Um, and Apple needs it. It can't be, uh, it can't be, you can't remove that parameter. Um, I tried to find what is the reason behind it. Um, I really couldn't get a proper answer. But what I think is, let's say you, are, uh, you have multiple apps that you need to uh, support. And um, Apple probably initially thought of using that array for that, but then, then no longer need it. So it happens all the time in software development that you need created something, then it's, it became an integral part of your um, you know, uh, API that you can't remove it anymore. But anyway, you know, the most interesting part is the details. Where you, the first parameter is the um, app ID. You can find it uh, from your uh, developer portal. You can, um, when you create an app, it's, it's just the app ID with a bundle identifier. Then you specify the paths, um, uh, paths, uh, again it's an array. You can specify a um, wildcard path so, so that it can handle uh, or every path. Or you can uh, specify certain URLs, uh, specific URLs that your app is going to handle. <coughs> The second part is generate an um, SSL certificate. Uh, this is not something that you can generate from Apple portal. This needs to be from a trusted authority. You need to generate an SSL certificate. Usually, um, if your um, domain provider provides HTTPS and they have um, the way to generate SSL certificate, you can do that. Um, once you have the SSL cert, you sign your file uh, like this uh, and the output is always going to be um, that Apple App Site Association. Then you have this, um, the sort keys that you need to use to sign it. Now the good thing is that you do not need this tape if you are targeting only iOS 9. So if you have, if you are only targeting iOS 9, you can upload the unsigned file directly to your um, uh, server. But if you need backward compatibility like iOS 8 and um, uh, I don't think it supports iOS 7, but uh, I'm not, sure, not too sure. Um, but for iOS 9, you don't need to uh, um, sign. For, if you're trying for backward compatibility, you need to use the SSL cert to sign. Then you just upload to your um, the root of your domain, um, and it needs to be um, HTTP or HTTPS. On the app side, there are very few setups as well as like literally you can get it running in in few minutes. This is the delegate. Um, um, in um, this is the uh, method that will get triggered on the application delegate. The main interesting part is the user activity. If you have uh, used or heard about uh, handoff, uh, which was um, I think introduced in iOS uh, eight, if I'm not wrong. Um, so handoff is a feature where you can let's say your application. Um, your user is using one device and um, he's using this application and suddenly he uses another device, then he can <coughs> resume the app from where he left. For example, um, Mac uh, and iPhone, they, they sync with each other. Similarly, um, Apple Watch and iPhone, they can sync with each other. You're doing certain task and then you want user to resume from wherever he has left. So uh, that is about handoff. And hand handoff kind of uses this delegate method as well. And um, these are the two domains. Like, basically, this, um, you need to have associated domains. And this needs to be like app, links, colon, and your domain name. And you, you need to have an entry for every domain that you support. So it's, let's say you support www.your you know, domain name, then you need to have an entry separately for that. And if you support a domain without a www, then uh, you need to have an entry for that as well. Uh, for the demo, what I did is I, I, I have an app, I'll walk you through the app, but um, I was um, um, running the sample today and I was unable to upload the file to my server because I do not have a private key on this Mac. So I can't show the complete demo um, on this Mac, but I'll walk you through the steps on the client side. The server side um, piece is also I, I'll show you, but the demo will not work. Maybe I'll send a video later on meetup.com or something. Um, 
best practices again we'll come to this uh, in a while after the demo um, Again, it's a swift um, best practice to do new things in an extension of your class. So if you're doing, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, let's say your view controller confirms to a certain protocol, uh, two different type of protocol or three different type of protocol. You need to kind of uh, make a practice that you confirm to these protocols individually in a separate extension. Um, for, this, the, for this one, um, all this part of uh, application delegate, I'm just, I want to kind of keep this code separately in an extension so that First of all, it's, uh, you can read um, this extension individually and see what individual extensions are doing. So each extension um, is meant to do uh, one specific task. For example, here, uh, I'm just going to handle all the code that is related to um, universal links. First, so you uh, basically have this um, delegate method, as, as I was saying. And um, the parameter that we're interested in is this user activity. <coughs> and user activity has um, a property called activity type. And if you're coming from a wave, you can have, you can specify the activity type. But let's say you're coming from a handoff, then you need to kind of handle that separately as well. Um, so if you're coming from with your activity type, uh, user activity will have a web page URL. Uh, <coughs> again, I think this is kind of a bad practice in Swift to uh, force down past um, an optional. Um, although here I know for sure that because it's coming from wave, I can force down cast. Um, but what you need to probably do is you can um, use a guard statement. Uh, So that's going to um, check if whether this value is nil or not, and if it's uh, not nil, it's going to unwrap, and I'll have the value in URL. Then I'm going to call this uh, present custom view controller with URL. Now with uh, URL, um, there is this thing called NS URL components, using which you can find different parts of the URL. You can find what is the host, what is the path. Um, so here I'm just taking, um, I'm, I'm just getting the host. I'm also getting the path components. And uh, you can even, uh, let's say you have a path component, so your path might be uh, multiple strings separated by you know, slash. Then you can do additional splitting logic here and then you can handle that. But at the end, you can have this parameter. You need to check, okay, what is my host? If it's coming from the um, from a trusted host or not. If it's coming from a trusted host, then handle this URL. Otherwise, you know, just uh, um, let user know that um, you know you're not supporting this host, or you can redirect user to Safari or whatever. Um, and uh, for my Sample code, what I'm doing is, uh, okay. Let me show you the app. It's a very simple app. I could have probably spent a little bit more time to make it look interesting, which probably I'm going to do after this meetup and uh, send the sample. But uh, just for the understanding, what I was trying to do is, <coughs> I have a, um, you know, just uh, this view controller where I have three items. Let's, say, let's imagine this is um, this is a table view, and you have three cells, and you tap on one cell, and you get the detail of that cell. What I was trying to do um, achieve with the sample uh, app is, if I have a direct URL for a particular item, I directly go to the details of the page. Uh, uh, 
uh, and imagine uh, you are trying to sell something on Caruso, right? And you want to give that universal link to your friends on Facebook or um, WhatsApp or whatever messaging platform, right? The moment they tap on the link, it directly takes user to <coughs> Carousel app to that particular page, right? That, that's the idea behind it. And if Carousel uh, today it, it doesn't accept payment, but let's say there is an app which accepts payment, you can just you, your friends can pay there and purchase that item directly from uh, from that page. Um, on the back end side, uh, on, the, on the server side, let me see. It's going to look something very simple like this. As I mentioned, your, um, you have the same JSON format. You specify your app ID uh, along with the bundle identifier. And for paths, you just, uh, for here, I was just using the wildcard path, uh, but you can specify the individual path that your, your app is going to handle. Um, there are few refactoring we can do in this code, first of all. Wherever there's a boolean value, we're just returning false, we're not handling anything. That's a really, really bad user experience. Uh, if you are not handling something, either you need to take user to Safari, um, and you know, uh, open uh, Safari, or you need to present an alert to um, user that uh, you're not handling this particular URL. Otherwise, uh, user will be presented a blank uh, view controller with no content in it, right? So um, on, the, on the main app here, um, I think this method itself is returning um, a bool value, and um, um, I'll see if it's false. Then I can do <coughs> I can do something like this, which is going to open um, the app in Safari. Um, I think it's going to. This is going to open that URL in Safari. Uh, you can present in UI like view or whatever. <coughs> uh, the best practice, as I mentioned, is you need to validate the input because not uh, necessarily, um, let's say, user can create a custom URL or it can be come from an untrusted source or whatever. So you need to validate whatever you're expecting. Uh, first of all, you need to validate whether it's coming from the right host or not. Um, then uh, whether it's, it has the proper path that your application is handling or not. If uh, there are certain paths that your app is unable to handle or you, you don't, do not have the provision to handle, then you need to show an alert uh, to user. And uh, as I mentioned, fail gracefully as in you open either in Safari or you show an, user, um, show an alert to user. And uh, although the universal link can support both HTTP and HTTPS, but let's say you have certain data that you're uh, sending from app um, to the browser or browser to app, and then you probably should use HTTPS instead of HTTP uh, <coughs> for security reasons. Um, these are the smart banners that I talked about. And uh, these are fairly simple to add to your um, uh, web, uh, mobile app. Uh, the only thing you need to do is you just need to add this meta um, tag to your uh, header of the page. Um, the first part, the name needs to be exactly the same, <coughs> Apple iTunes app. Uh, the content part, uh, that needs to be the app ID. This, this is the iTunes ID um, or App Store ID. Then app argument is something that, uh, again, the page is going to share with your app if you need uh, use it. And this is mostly useful. Um, the first part is okay. If user hasn't installed your application, then it will present, okay, install this app, or you haven't installed. But if your user has installed the application and he's on a particular page of your um, website and you want to take user to certain page within the app, then the app argument comes into a picture so that you can uh, just redirect user to that. Uh, these are the two resources that you can refer to. Um, uh, I mostly covered uh, topics from uh, 509, but there's another thing which is really, really interesting and which goes well with um, the universal link, which is the 
um, search APIs, how deep linking works when you search certain things on um, the spotlight of iOS 9 and how Siri basically looks for things and then uh, it, it can, uh, search API also can redirect user to certain section of your apps. Uh, as well as if your app is not installed by <coughs> users, they can still, um, you can still uh, provide search APIs or you, you can index your uh, different pages of your app so that when users search a certain things on Spotlight, um, they can uh, get to know about your app. Um, another thing which I did not cover in the, in the, in the material is, um, let's say your user is going to your website and the user has logged into your website, right? And you have the login credentials for the user. Um, then he's visiting some uh, certain thing. Then you're redirecting your um, re redirecting the user back to the app. And if user comes back to the app and he has to log in again, um, that's kind of sucks, right? So it's yeah. like uh, so. There is um, there is a way using universal links um, where you can save the credentials, um, uh, basically Safari credentials or credentials saved in keychain to the app. Um, let me see. Um, so it's look going to look. Um, something like this. So when user comes to your app, it's going to present. Are you going to use the credential from this? It has to be already within the device. The credential can use it. If you have a um, shared keychain, for example, on Safari, right, um, <coughs> then... It has to be already there, so you already have seen... No, so um, um, if, you ha if you're using the same Apple ID for your Mac and your yes. iPhone, then obviously the exactly. username and password is there. So either it needs to be um, within the keychain or you need to be using an Apple ID um, so where you have the username and password saved within the Safari. Um, Kids, so any any questions? Only for Safari browser. No, this is for Safari. Uh, but there are a lot of lot of new things that um, every year because with every uh, OS launch, you have like thousands of new APIs that Apple announced, and then we do not cover all of. All of it in our session. So again, it depends on the speaker's preference or whatever. Um, but another thing I, I thought might be interesting, um, if, if some of you want to cover uh, yourself in uh, some of the future meters, is the force touch API. Right? You have a, a 3D touch um, which is available on iPhone 6 and and 6s Plus, um, which will uh, allow uh, you just to force touch and go to certain sections of the. Um, yeah, uh, I would imagine, I haven't looked into that API myself, but I, I would imagine um, they would be using some form of universal links there or URL skin there uh, as well. Um, okay. Any questions? No? If not, uh, then our next speaker is Isaac, who is going to talk about uh, WebKit. Thank you.